Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. This video is long due because I have encountered this problem a couple of times and I think it's time we address it. This video is um, really perfect for those of you who have Wix websites and did it yourselves but you're not web designers and you don't know the web design rules, methodologies and concepts. But you still want to navigate around your website and create certain elements yourself. One thing I recently encountered is the fact that most of uh, my clients don't know the whole concept of Wix Studio and how it's organized, or Wix in general. I hope this will be kind of useful for you to get around Wix and understand how things work. When we talk about web design, we talk about hierarchy. And we have start and end in anything like process and uh, web design as well. So with your email address, which one you choose to use with Wix, you get this dashboard or this is your environment where you can create as many sites or websites as you want. The creation of the websites happens here and as you can see you can choose between templates, blank canvas, use Wix editor or use your own template. Basically you can upload one as well. As you can see I think they removed editor X because they're fully trying to transition editor X to Wix Studio. So as you can see here with my account, this is my account and this is my current level and for each uh, premium website I get a roll on I get also points which is a different uh, topic it's not for this video but these are my sites that I'm managing and I have created some kind of folders here so I can see which one are ongoing finished or demo for experimentation so these here are websites these are separate websites on their own which means each one of them has a different domain and it has different plan and has different people with permissions and whatnot. As you can see, on some of them are only me, which is a demo website or something. On some of them, there are multiple people, which are, I will blur out, which are part of a team. So for this ex concept to grasp it, you would say that for each email, you get to be part of different people's websites, being a freelancer or business owner. Also as a business owner, you can create different websites, one for experimentation, one for different businesses or just a draft version of your website. Those websites that you paid for with the premium label are, are those that probably are going to be live and visible online for other people to see. I'm talking about from the perspective of a business owner who has purchased Wix Studio or Wix and has paid premium plan and has one website created on their dashboard. Like for example, one of those websites is yours and you have paid for, for the premium plan and you have it live. The editing and permissions. Let's check the roles. Here this article is probably one of the most used one that I have sent to my clients with the roles and permissions. Here the roles and permissions are ordered in hierarchy and this means like the top one has the most rights and further down the rights narrow. We have the admin or the owner and then we have admin co-owner. Then we have website manager which can edit publish site but cannot manage billing and delete and duplicate or transfer websites which most of the time it's me. Website designer who can only edit certain parts of the website and back office manager. And there are also much smaller roles and uh, niche roles that you can research over here. So depending on the roles, different people can have different access to your website. For example, let's say that you have created your own website but you want someone else, aka freelancer, review the website, do some redesign changes and then you have to provide feedback. How would you access the web pages that the freelancer have created on your website that you have added them as a role, right here? On specific site, you add specific team members. You go on edit site and this is what people see when they open your website for editing. Now, I will not go through every single layout option because I assume you already know what different things do. But for example, you can see here that this is you, the owner, who can see the website. 
this is your domain name if you have paid for domain name it probably looks different and this upgrade here it's not visible but basically this is the layout that you can see so let's say I have hired a freelancer and they have edited um, the shop page and I want to see the changes that they have made to the shop page when it comes to a hierarchy and searching for different things on a website usually this all in terms of navigation and finding big components and parts of a website happens here on the left side addition extraction manipulation of the content happens on the left side here we have the option add elements we have layers which means for this page and every single page on this website we have layers different layers which are part of a tree as you can see here this is the page you also you can change the page and rename it reorganize it add comment and so on so this structure is for this page if I want to change the page and work on something else for example I want to go and work on the shop and see what changes are done on the shop I will go here and choose shop so now the indication that I'm here on the page shop are clearly visible and also when I go to the layers panel I can also see that the current page that I'm manipulating is called shop here on the site pages I can see the whole website and all pages I can see where is the home indicated with this icon I can reorder with this icon here the pages in the order of them all and also I can see the categories of pages that they have blog pages and store pages these pages here listed on the left are all part of this website and as you can see in the layers I can manipulate everything within the page which is shop indicated here and here for example let's say I want to change the name of all products as you can see I have chosen this one and I can see here in the tree exactly what is the path to this specific element which is the h2 text or the heading I am inside of a container which is inside of a cell which is inside of a hero section and this section is part of the page because when it's collapsed it's clearly visible that the parent of this whole structure we, we call them parents in web design is the page and then under inside of the page are the header which is a global marked with green which shows up on every single page here a section and then a section called pro all products here a section is named section but also has this um, dotted lines which means that this is a container and then under the section all products we have also another global called footer for each and every element that we want to manipulate for example this text box it opens up an inspector on the right side where we can individually no matter what kind of rules globally are set on every single element on this page or the website even we can manipulate and change each and every setting on the right individually one by one which means that if this h2 has this color globally set by the team which is here this a with a drop called side styles and the team here says that h2 is 36 pixel and is uh, the font Montserrat this means that I can individually and here it, where it gets messy if you don't know uh, basic web design rules and how Wix works you can change for each individual element the settings however you want you can make it bold you can make it italic and these edits will apply only on this individual element because this inspector is only for this element only because this is only the element that is being selected at the moment so it makes sense that you are individually adjusting and tweaking different elements also one other thing to have in mind that when you do different settings and styling on different elements some of the functions might not be visible or available depending on their parents parents are here the container and then if the container has certain restrictions in terms of 
interactions or styles, then certain things may not be possible on the text elements which are below. And also same goes for the section that probably has different stylings for the cells and cells for the container. So it, what is really important in web design is to know the hierarchy of the elements. And this is the whole point of the video. This is what I wanted to show you. Now, having this in mind, understanding the hierarchy of Wix and how things work, you can easily now choose to add different pages, being static or dynamic, rearrange them, search for them, add new pages from here as well, because you can also add it from a couple of places. This is the really fun thing about web design. You can do one thing in multiple ways. When we talk about web design, I really want you to think about the bigger picture. Always think backwards, reverse engineer and think about it like if I cannot do something, there's probably something preventing me from doing it. And I hope you find this video useful and if you do, please make sure to leave a like, share with a friend who struggles with wigs and also of course subscribe for more videos like this and turn on the bell notifications because I try to publish once a week. And you don't want to miss it probably if you're a Wix uh, user or Webflow user or you want to start freelancing because sometimes I post about freelancing and no code development in general. And whenever you think about uh, Wix and how to design, think about the tree and the layers <laughs> and the parents <laughs> and all other elements. But if you ever in need feel free to reach out and leave a comment and I will do my best to help you out. Or in other words, if you don't have the time to spend on certain issue, make sure you ask the right person with the right explanation and requirements to help you out. Because time equals money and money can buy time. That's it. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. And remember, sharing is caring. Bye-bye.